Hi, long time no see. I'm Mateusz and I'm finally vaccinated. Today we will talk about uses of Microsoft Paint. Today we will paint creature shapeshifters and we will do it fast. In Etherfield the heroes are the main focus, so I want them to stand out. On the other hand, shapeshifters have a secondary role, so I want to paint them efficiently, not spending 3 hours on every single model. Let's have a look at the sculpts. When I'm looking at them I see poor, rugged, but angry creatures, and I want to emphasize that. I also want to stick with the style of my whole set, so only a few colorful elements and some metallic gold. Luckily these minis are very similar, so I can easily paint them in parallel with the same colors and techniques. At first I will use filters, similarly as in my Nemesis Intruders video, but I will also up my game with oil paints. Whoa, 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 hold on a moment. What oil paints, you might say? Well, I am experimenting with them for a few months already and I think I can share some tricks. To start painting with oils you need few things. First, of course, oil paints. I bought this Van Gogh set of student grade paints and they are more than enough for all my works. Second, you need a diluent. Unlike acrylics, oil paints can be diluted with turpentine or white spirit, and I strongly recommend the latter. Third, get some Q-tips, we will use them to remove excess paint. Fourth, you need some brushes, different than usually used for your everyday acrylics. I use fine synthetic brushes of size 0 and 1. You can use a natural hairbrush, but oils will damage them quickly. Lastly, remember about safety. Oil paints and their diluents are toxic, so use gloves and don't lick your brush. Seriously, you shouldn't do it even while you paint with acrylics. Ok, on to the painting. I've got my minis already prepared and primed with Zenital Highlight Technique. For more info, check episode 0 of this series. First I'm going to increase the contrast by dry brushing my minis with white paint. I'm using cold white, because I want to desaturate warm colors I will paint over it, but you can go with standard flat white. It is very important here to hit only up-facing areas, where the light would hit the figures. When all four minis are ready, I'm preparing my first filter. And when I talk about filter, I mean very diluted paint that will show color present underneath. It is a little stronger than a glaze and similar to Citadel contrast paints. If you have them, you can use them here. I don't, so I'm mixing colors myself, using mostly inks. I start by mixing red with tiny bit of green and yellow, to check out if it will look correct to me. Next I'm using more inks, starting with red, then green and a lot of yellow to create a pool of paint I will use on all my minis. Pure inks are way too strong and also glossy, so I dilute them with few drops of ultramat varnish and similar amount of glazing medium. I'm constantly checking my dilution by painting over my palette a little down from the main paint pool. Ok, this step is not as important, so I'm just moving forward. I simply apply my filter over all the skin areas. I'm not too precise, I just want to fill all of them. I'm not even removing excess paint in crevices. When I'm finished with all four of them, I use yellow ink over their feet and beaks, so they look more bird-like. I've done a similar thing with their feathers, using sepia and yellow inks. I diluted them a lot, because I want these guys to have lighter feathers, but if you want some darker tones, simply add less medium to your mix.
some lone feathers on the skin also needed cleaning up, so I painted them white and applied my filter when they dried. Now using some drying time, let's focus on the bases. I want them simple and quite dark. I mixed black ink with some green and drop of ultramat varnish and painted over the bases and rocks. Use a dubbing motion to be sure you pushed your paint in every crevice. Oh, and I forgot to tell you earlier. Don't use your favorite brush with inks. You will just damage it. For the tree trunk, I used skin color leftovers mixed with green ink. This way creating a random brown. It's not going to be a main focus, so any brown will do. At this stage I inspected all the minis and corrected all areas that haven't been painted yet with white. Any stains at this stage might damage the final effect, cause we will use mostly very translucent paints. Now I prepared my clothing's color. I decided to use blue, cause all other areas are going to be warm and a cold tone like this will nicely complement them. I used my Prussian blue ink with some sepia, but really any blue will do. I diluted the same way as skin and paint over all the cloth areas, but this time trying hard not to stain any already painted parts. Lastly, I painted all gold elements the usual way, so very dark brown undercoat and metallic gold paint over it. Now I'm varnishing all over my minis. I want to get rid of all the glossiness of inks, but most importantly prepare my mini for the next step. Oil paints do not react with acrylics, so it's safe to paint over them. But I will use Q-tips later and I want to avoid damaging my acrylics layers while removing excess oils. And varnish helps with that really well. Now it is time to prepare our oil paints. They dry really slowly, so you don't need any fancy palette. A flat piece of plastic or glass will be totally fine. I applied all the colors I will use and started mixing. First I want my magenta darker, so I used some dark blue called ultramarine and diluted with white spirit to a consistency similar to acrylic paints I used for normal layering. Now I simply paint over all the skin areas with this paint, using synthetic brush. Try not to dip your brush in water, and if you want to clean it, use a small container with a white spirit, and rinse your brush over a paper towel. With same principles, I mixed yellow with some burnt umber to paint shapeshifter's feet and beaks. Burnt umber with some black was great for painting over the feathers, but near their faces I also added some yellow to lighten it up. I don't care about transitions now, I'm just creating this beautiful mess. For the bases I just used black, and for a tree trunk burnt umber. Lastly I mixed ultramarine with a tiny bit of green and painted over all the clothing areas. Now all of you probably think, what have you done? Now they look super ugly. But this is a stage when the magic happens. I prepare clean white spirit in a small container, a bunch of q-tips and a clean paper towel and start removing paint. First I dip a q-tip in a spirit and start removing paint with a dabbing motion. And every few touches I dab it on a paper towel to remove excess paint.
I slowly work area by area, changing Q-tips frequently. It is super important here to be delicate. If you use force or start rubbing the paint, you will damage a very fragile layer of acrylics. I'm also trying to remove more of paint from the upper areas to simulate zenithal lighting condition. Some areas will be impossible to touch with a Q-tip, but in such cases you might just use a brush. I don't know about you, but for me this process is super satisfying. Ok, some theory. What we are doing here is using a tiny amount of white spirit on a Q-tip to activate oils again, remove most of them from some reason areas and letting diluted excess flow into crevices. This way we create natural transition between colors, without putting much work into it. Ok, when you are finished we need to let our minis dry. But this time it's not matter of hours, you will need to wait a day or two. Oils can dry even a week if you don't dilute them at all or use a drying medium. While we wait for the paint to dry, I have something to tell you. In the near future I plan to prepare some more theoretical videos, starting with color theory and how to mix paints. If you want me to touch any specific topic, please write a comment. Back to painting. I needed to wait a day for my paints to dry, and now I want to add some finishing touches. I keep in mind that I want to do it efficiently, so I will touch only elements I feel matter. Also, to be sure I won't accidentally activate any oils, I just varnish the mini again with ultra matte varnish. First of all, after close inspection I have noticed some damage from Q-tips. I just fixed it by painting it again with paints from yesterday. That's a great advantage of wet palettes. For the biggest impact I started by refreshing jewelry. I used gold paints on a tip of a brush to paint the edges and upper facing areas of the bracelets. This way we will emulate a reflective contrasting look of the metal which plain gold paint can't really mimic. Next I mixed very dark grey and painted all the claws and used the same color in the eye sockets. I want their eyes to look glowy, so I used white to paint over the eyeball and surrounding areas, leaving dark paint in the crevices. The further I got, the less paint I left on the mini. I also used the same white paint to paint over the edges of the claws, to accent their sharpness. I want eyes to glow blue. So I used ink of this color, diluted by match, to paint their eyes and surrounding areas. I intentionally let the paint flow into recesses. I used a little paler blue to paint only the eyeballs and finished it with a tiny white spot in the middle. Lastly I wanted them a little more dusty and dirty. For that I used dry pigments. I applied them right after I varnished a mini, so the pigment sticks to the surface. I used it in lower areas and the base itself. It's not a necessary step, but it suited my artistic vision of these dirty creatures. To finish up the work I painted base rims black and varnished my minis so I can play with them without worrying about damage. And here is the final result. They definitely look like dirty and rugged, but still dangerous predators. 
Glowing eyes also suit the game's dreamy theme really well. And most importantly, they took three and a half hours in total. And that's it. I hope you found this tutorial useful, and if you did, consider liking and subscribing to this channel. Thanks for watching, and see you next time. Bye!